Hello, everybody. Uh, it's actually Maya, myself, Maya, and Lucy. Wonderful Lucy. It's, it's okay, you didn't know. There was an update. Uh, so um, thank you all for coming out, and thank you so much to the Howell Arts Collective for organizing this fundraiser. Uh, second year in a row now that they've organized fundraisers for, uh, to support the work um, of Missing Justice. It's really important to mention that um, Kevin was just saying that uh, talking about Howell's solidarity with Missing Justice, well, Missing Justice is a solidarity collective in itself, so we work in solidarity with um, Native communities, families of missing and murdered Native women and girls uh, in Quebec and elsewhere in and around Montreal. Um, so the work that we do is solidarity-based. Um, the group has been, um, and obviously would not be possible at all, the work that we do without um, the support and um, the guidance of many of the communities and people that we work with and that we consult with on a regular basis. Um, the group itself, Missing Justice, is the short um, name of the group. It's short for Justice for Missing and Murdered Native Women. Um, it's been in existence since 2009. Uh, we call ourselves a grassroots solidarity collective. These are three terms that I try and explain sometimes, and people have many different understandings of them. Um, and even people within the group might have different understandings of them at different times as well. Uh, grassroots generally means um, we're privileged in a sense that uh, the, the solidarity group is, uh, excuse me, is housed within the Center for Gender Advocacy um, at Concordia University, so it's actually officially a campaign at the center there. The center does a lot of amazing work, um, and so Missing Justice is, is lucky enough to have um, various types of support from the center, and has since, uh, since its beginning in 2009. Um, and so we have been lucky enough um, to not have to ever depend on um, any kind of sketchy funding. <laughs> any of the forms of sketchy funding. So far we've had a lot of um, amazing support, not only from the center, but from community groups, uh, including Howell, but not limited to Howell. We've actually had a lot of support um, so from a lot of different communities in Montreal and even in Ontario. Um, so that's been amazing. Grassroots solidarity um, to the group uh, in a general sense generally means that um, we are, like we don't have our own demands per se. Um, the mandate of the group mostly is to amplify and echo the demands that have already be, been being made for, I want to say decades, but really we can say, we could say 500 years and not be, um, <laughs> not be wrong necessarily. The words would have changed. The words to the message and the, the words and the requests and the words and the desires would have changed, but um, I think that I think that um, when we talk about numbers and statistics and the problem at hand and what's been going on, um, and we say this many cases since 1980, roughly, whatever, like that means something, but it really only means so much, and it's just, it goes back forever. Um, and it will, anyway. <laughs> I'm still really choked up by the choir's performance, by the way. Um, so, um, solidarity. Basically, uh, we're other people, other demands that have already been being made, we are supporting them by um, by making them louder where uh, where it's helpful to do so in consultation, in consistent consultation. Um, the group is um, mostly happens to be non-native um, women of color for the most part, but it's open to anyone at all um, who um, who wants to get involved in organizing. Lucy will say a little bit more about that. Um, and it was the, the group was formed mostly um, in response in 2009 to a perceived lack of, total lack of education, mostly in the non-native community, about and how can we fully expect differently when the education system uh, just completely lacks any kind of uh, education around native history or, um, or, or just completely skews any idea of anything that could possibly be thought of as accurate Native history. Um, so uh, anyhow, so it was, the group was formed in response to this perceived lack of education, as well as um, just an, like realizing more and more that there was a not, a, not, a, like not an understanding um, of the systemic nature of the issue very much at all in the media 
or among the population at large. And there was, you know, um, a lot of a lot of ideas uh, being spoken about about how violence against Native women was only a problem out west in BC, for example, or um, you know, isolated cases occur, no real analysis of why or how or um, who's implicated exactly, uh, such as the Canadian government, police, ju uh, legal system, media, corporate media, so on. So we, the, the, the campaign is largely popular education based because um, that's where we see our own role as being the most effective. And so I'll pass it over to, oh, before I do, I just want to acknowledge the stars in the room. Um, they were, uh, the stars were made by organizers of the Marche Mondiale des Femmes this year. Um, and uh, basically, this is just a small fraction of the stars right now that are hanging in the room. There were several hundreds made um, to represent, again, just a small fraction of the many thousands of uh, cases of missing and murdered women and girls that are known of. Um, and so each star represents a different woman or girl, and they have different names and where they're from on them. And so, just a, again, just a small fraction are represented here tonight on either side. And, um, and they were held, they have little sticks because they were held at the February 14th annual March for Missing and Murdered Women. So I just wanted to bring that into the center. And Lucy here will tell you a little bit more about what the group does. All right. Thank you, Maya. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so moved by the choir that it's almost hard to sort of like get back into my body and try to speak, you know. Um, so the the missing justice works with um, with a whole bunch of volunteers. So the lifeblood of missing justice has been volunteer driven, uh, which is fantastic. Each year we get new volunteers and they help. Um, do all sorts of things that the group does annually. Actually, before I tell you what the group does, uh, I want to point out that last year, Howell also had another benefit for us. And the funds raised during that benefit concert actually went to pay for the commission of a mural that is now sitting on Saint Laurent near the Native Friendship Center on the wall of L'Insoumise, the anarchist bookstore. And it was done by Fanny Aisha and it's there to commemorate and have a visual marker in the city, something that will remind us about Native uh, women who have gone missing, who have been murdered, who are so easily erased. Um, and so to have a visual representation of that in the city on a busy street where you can walk down and be like, it's not going to be erased. And a lot of what Missing Justice does is trying to push and get non-Native, our like non-Native communities in Montreal to pay attention. <laughs> um, and so in order to do that, we organize marches. So the October 4th March and the uh, February 14th March. Uh, we invite speakers and we facilitate panel discussions, organize film screenings, workshops, teach-ins in universities and sit-up classrooms. Uh, occasionally we'll have a direct action. Um, we also do as much media outreach as we can. Yeah, so that's what we do. <laughs> um, and now I think I'm going to call up... Oh. oh, yeah, if anyone does want to get involved, we always need more volunteers. <laughs> and it's always fun to have a Missing Justice meeting, honestly, truly. We have a lot of fun together. Um, the the sign-up sheet is sitting on that table there behind the stars on that side, or in front of the stars on that side. And you can give us your email, and we can let you know what's going on and... Get involved. Okay, thank you. So, as Lucy mentioned earlier, we have another group member who is here tonight, Chantelle Henderson. It's going to add a few words as well, just before we move on. All right, so hi, I'm Chantal. Um, I've been on the Missing Justice Collective for um, since the fall of last year. Um, I moved to Montreal to study community economic development at Concordia University. And I had a special interest in uh, missing and murdered indigenous women. 
uh, not only because I, I am one, but um, because I am also a former missing person and a survivor of violence myself. So I, I easily could have been one of the names on the stars on the wall, but fortunately, I'm here standing in front of you today telling you about why it's very important to get... Yeah, so um, I joined because um, I'm very supportive of any action-oriented um, organization involvement uh, initiatives. Uh, I feel like, you know, as a former missing person, I feel like there's not enough being done. Um, I am very supportive of the marches and the vigils, and it's great seeing all the people come out. But we, I really would like to see all those people actually, you know, getting involved, educating themselves, learning more about the initiatives, and Mission Justice definitely provides that. And I found them when I moved to Montreal, and um, I got involved with them, and they are the most, they are the most supportive, supportive group um, I've encountered. <laughs> I've been on a number of committees um, in, I'm from Winnipeg. Um, largest urban in indigenous population in Canada. So um, coming to Montreal where there's, uh, I believe there's less than 1% of indigenous people that live here, it's very different <laughs> uh, coming from Winnipeg where it's 12%. Um, so basically um, how I came to this issue, not just from my personal experience, but also it really hit home um, when someone I knew went missing. Um, and it wasn't just a girl uh, or a woman, it was a guy, and he was native. And that really hit home to me that it's not just a woman issue, it's just an indigenous people issue, that people like myself are targets for violence, for you know sexual violence, um, attacks, assaults. Um, and it's very unfortunate that um, we live in a society where per people like me are de devalued. Um, but I have a lot to offer. I'm a human being. Um, I have a lot, you know, <laughs> I want to get out there. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you people like knew about Sean Lamb. Um, he was a serial killer in my neighborhood in Winnipeg. He was targeting Aboriginal women with addiction issues. And that's when it really hit home when it was like literally, literally in my backyard when I had to fear for my safety, um, walking home, catching the bus. That's when I feel, felt like I really needed to take action on this issue. Um, so basically, I want to learn how to, you know, get more involved. Um, simple things like, you know, volunteering at these organizations. Um, you know, things like that. Um, I have some stats here. Um, basically, Aboriginal women represent 4.3% of the population in all of Canada. Yet 16% of us are murdered. 11% of us go missing in all of the population of Canada. We are over, overly represented in these numbers. Yet we are a small proportion to the population. And to clarify, not all the women who go missing or are murdered are in the sex trade. 12% are actually in the sex trade. So people like myself going to school, you know, even just walking to school or going to work, you know, it can happen anytime. And I just feel like um, people need to be aware of that and uh, get involved. Um, there has been enough studies done of this issue. And I don't think we need one more to say, you know, there is a problem here. <clears throat> so 
So basically, I believe an action is needed now and that we need to stop continuing to study the issue and join action-oriented um, movements, organizations, initiatives, such, such as the Missing Justice Collective, and um, start uh, doing your part to uh, stopping the violence and keep people like me alive.